Hi everybody. Um, hopefully you got to sleep in and you're watching this video at a time that's super convenient for you. Sorry for the disruption, but I think uh, at least for most of you, it'll be kind of nice for you not to have to get up and drive to class and get up early in the morning. So you can do this work almost anytime you want for the next month or so while we're uh, on break. So I need you to make sure because we're doing this by distance, if you're having trouble understanding something or if it's not clear to you, um, you need to contact me because um, otherwise I won't know. I have sent out all the abbreviated PowerPoints so you'll know which stuff uh, you can omit. And what I have in front of me today to finish up the uh, sexuality lecture is the abbreviated PowerPoints that I did for myself for this uh, section. Um, but you have them for the next couple of chapters. And then when we come back, uh, our first day is our, our test. So one of our videos that we'll do just before the test, I will um, cover that a little bit. Just make sure you're ready to go. Um, I also wanted to mention to you uh, what your peer review lectures are about. Um, you've each been given a topic and hopefully to break up things a little bit so it's not just me talking to you. Um, you will study your topic uh, using the book and put together, I think I said 500 words or less. It doesn't have to be really long, but learn it yourself and then put it together in a few paragraphs so that you can explain it to the class. I will then take the stuff that you do, some of you, about half of you are uh, have the first due date and about half the second, and edit what needs to be edited to make sure it's right, and then I'll send it out to everybody. So hopefully that will give us a little bit of variety and uh, make it a little more interesting. So today what I want to do in this video, when each of the videos are going to be probably five, ten minutes long at the most, uh, just to kind of introduce stuff to you um, uh, for those of you who might want to hear it in uh, this form as opposed to just reading it yourself. So last time we talked uh, in the chapter on human sexuality, we talked about the five types of gender. We talked about genetic gender, which is uh, genetically what you are as an X, X or XY on the 23rd chromosomal pair, and that's determined at conception. We talked about gonadal gender, which is your reproductive organs. We talked about genital gender, which is what most people think about when they think of gender. It's just one type. And we talked about hormonal gender, which is the preponderance of testosterone if you're a male or estrogen if you're a female. And the fifth one, and most important, make sure you remember that, is your gender identity. What do you think about your gender? So as a mental health worker, I promise you, people have, uh, um, on, on average, have no troubles. All five types of gender match, and they're fine with who they are. But for those that do have challenges, it is disruptive because, our, as we talked about in class, our gender um, affects almost everything that we do. Uh, from our names to our careers to uh, how we talk and words that we can use and so forth. So it can be a major issue. And as always, remember, this is not a religious lecture. I'm not trying to tell you what to think about um, your biblical perspective on this issue, but um, I want you to have the information you need so that we can understand people. And I think what a Christ-like thing uh, would be is that we understand people and have compassion for folks that might have challenges that we don't. So um, what I want to do uh, for the next few minutes is give you a little overview of what's left of the chapter. I want to talk to you about some terms that you probably heard, and you may know what they are, but let me clarify for you if you don't. Um, heterosexual, bisexual, homosexual, these are terms that you will hear out in the media. Heterosexual simply means that you have the propensity for sexual attraction to people of the opposite sex. And that is probably about 80 to 90% of the population, somewhere in that neighborhood. Um, and that's what people often think of as normal sexual attraction. It's certainly statistically normal. Um, homosexual, homo simply means same, is the propensity for sexual attraction to members of the same sex. Both with hetero and homosexual, it doesn't mean that you act on it. It simply means that's what the sexual attraction is. Bisexual, bi means two, like bicycle. Bisexual means the propensity of sexual attraction to either sex. Now, if you were to Google different kinds of sex, you'd get about a hundred different uh, labels. And after about four or five, I think it gets a little redundant, but you can get the idea that there are a lot of people that have varied ideas about what sexual attraction is all about. And the list gets longer day by day. But these are the ones that I want you to know. Um, you also see in your study guide the word homophobia. 
Um, homo means same, and phobia it means fear, as we've talked about before. So fear of same-sex attraction. Just because you don't like homosexuality or don't think it's appropriate doesn't make you a homophobe, and that's some of what you hear in the media these days, which kind of bugs me a little bit. But there are people who are afraid of people who have same-sex attraction, and that by definition is homophobia. Please pay attention to the stuff on gender roles. We talked a little bit about this in class last week, but gender roles are those things that are sort of expected of you because of your gender, whether you're male or female. So a real clear gender role might be if you're a male, your dad might take you hunting when you're a kid. And if you're a female, your mom may teach you to cook. Now, those are also stereotypes, but they're roles that we tend to fall into. So uh, men and women, when they marry, unless they talk about it ahead of time, they will pick up the roles that stereotypes tend to breed. So stereotypes are that women stay home and work in the house, raise children, take care of babies and so forth, cook and do laundry. But of course, there are all kinds of options beyond that, but that's the stereotype. And men uh, mow the grass and clean the gutters and go to work. Of course, we live in a world where both men and women work and there are all kinds of varieties. But because of these stereotypes, um, generally women get saddled with a lot of work that men could do. So like in my house, I do the laundry, I do a lot of the cooking, not most, but I clean the kitchen and do things like that deliberately, not only to help my wife, but to make sure that I don't fall into gender stereotyping and gender roles as well. So uh, last couple of, of issues. There are two sections toward the end of the chapter that I'll just let you look on your own. Um, one has to do with child abuse um, and another has to do with rape. Make sure you look over those carefully. Child abuse is my specialty, as you know, as a clinician, and I've seen hundreds of children over the years who have been uh, physically and sexually abused. And this section, like much of what we do, not only do I want you to know it, but hopefully it will help you as you become a parent and are around young children in your career so you know what to watch for. As far as rape goes, um, ladies, I hate to tell you this, but the statistics are about one in four college students by the time they graduate will be a victim of sexual assault. And that's a staggering and frightening statistic. Uh, so it's important for you to know that as well. Um, there's a section on paraphilias. Paraphilias are unusual sexual interests. Uh, there are about five of them. Um, exhibitionists is what we call flashers. Um, sexual sadists and sexual masochists are two sides of the same coin. Uh, sadists enjoy uh, giving pain to others and masochists enjoy receiving it in a sexual way. Uh, Freuderism is in there, may be the first time you've ever heard that term, and this is probably the creepiest one. Um, people with this sexual paraphilia enjoy sexually touching other people uh, without their knowledge. And so this is typically done in like uh, crowded elevators and uh, big crowds, trains and things like that. Um, Make sure you look over the section on sexually transmitted infections. Um, again, another frightening statistic about um, college students is one in four college students will leave college with, a, with at least one sexually transmitted infection. Some of these are permanent and some of these can be cured. So uh, read over that. Um, I by no means assume that all college students are sexually active, for sure, but it is important for you to know about it because of the statistics even in a college that's a Christian college, um, we see quite a bit of um, sexual activity that you might not expect in a Christian college. One of my friends in another university did a study of colleges just like ours uh, several years ago and found that the data uh, in Christian colleges is very close to what it is in secular schools. So make sure you read over that stuff. So I hope the zombie apocalypse has not gotten you and hurt you. And I hope this video is a good introduction for you into the process that we're gonna use. If you have trouble accessing it, um, or if for some reason it's garbled or you can't hear, let me know, I'm not super techno, uh, technological. But maybe this will be a little interesting for you. So I will see you next time, and I hope you're enjoying a little bit of a break. Thanks, bye.